Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, DwyerSportsBetting.com. Look us up on Roku or in the sports section, Dwyer Boxing and Sports News. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. These are just free observations following week five of the National Football League 2013 season. Right. Um, for premium picks, visit us at DwyerSportsBetting.com. Now, in an earlier video, I made the case that you should consider a position on KC to win the Super Bowl. Right. It's not that I think they're going to win the Super Bowl. All you want is a position on the future so that if they make the playoffs, you're able to hedge the play and make money regardless of what happens, right? Given the odds being offered, you're getting incredible leverage. Well, of course, at the time, KC was a 25 to one long shot to win the Super Bowl. Think about it, 25 to one. Well, now KC, believe it or not, is five and O. Oh. They're a near certainty to make the playoffs. The casinos here are begging you to take their money, right? Understand, they have 11 games to play. They're already at five wins. If they go five and six the rest of the way, they'll make the playoffs at 10 and six. Let's take this one step further. Did you know that five and oh, Kansas City plays their next three games at home. And did you know included in those three games are games against the Oakland Raiders and the Cleveland Browns. Now I know Oakland and Cleveland are improved teams, but let's just say diplomatically, those are winnable games. Well, this morning, October the 8th, 2013, would it surprise you to know that the Kansas City Chiefs are still a 20 to one long shot to win the Super Bowl. So you're getting 20 to one on a five and O team with their next three games at home and with one of the league's best defenses. By contrast, a team with the same record and an inferior defense, the Denver Broncos right now are five to two, right? That's two and a half to one to win the Super Bowl. So just think through the math, you're getting compelling value with the Kansas City Chiefs in the futures market. Let's shift gears and talk about another team. I'm in the Bay Area. I can't turn right or left without running into San Francisco 49er fans. And understand, many of these fans were raised on the Roman Empire of the 1980s. Montana, Ronnie Lott, Jerry Rice, Roger Craig, Keena Turner. You remember those names, right? Charles Haley. And they feel it's their birthright to dominate. Even in the 1990s, people forget. They won a Super Bowl with names like Steve Young, Ricky Waters, right? During that 1990s decade, they also had a great young wide receiver, Terrell Owens, right? So the people out here really have expectations that might be a bit unrealistic. Here's what you need to know about the San Francisco 49ers. Can we agree that in the postseason you need a quarterback who can see the field, who can hit the open receiver, who spreads the ball around? The last thing you want is a quarterback who can't do that, a quarterback who fixates on just a few targets, especially when those targets might not necessarily be a prime Jerry Rice or a current 
Des Bryant, right? If those targets aren't overly dominant wide receivers, then you're at a disadvantage if you're backing the quarterback who's just hitting, let's say, possession receivers and tight ends. Take a look at the San Francisco 49er box score in their big victory over the Houston Texans. Right here, as you can imagine, they're calling it a blowout. It's hard to argue otherwise when one team has over 30 and the other team only has three points. In that game, for the 34 or, or so points the 49ers scored, did you know that Colin Kaepernick, their quarterback, only completed passes to three people? Three. Of his six completions, and you heard me right, six completions, five of them went to Pro Bowl tight end Vernon Davis and possession receiver Anquan Bolden. Folks, if your quarterback cannot spread the ball around better than that, you're in trouble. Kaepernick physically is one of the most gifted quarterbacks in the league. He has a gun, right? He's one of the most accurate throwers in the league. And of course, when he uses his legs, he's one of the fastest quarterbacks, one of the best running quarterbacks in the league. But you know how this works. The story's out on him now. People know he can run. So they're going to keep him in the pocket in the playoffs, right? The fences are not going to let him beat them with his feet. In the pocket, Colin Kaepernick is not a quarterback who sprays the ball around the field. Just consider the press is ripping Matt Schaub. Matt Schaub completed passes to eight different receivers. Eight. Colin Kaepernick, three, right? If you go back and look at the stats from the 49er Seattle Seahawks game, you're going to see the Seahawks with press coverage manned up on and stopped Anquan Bolden. He can be stopped, right? What happens then? Are 49er fans really hoping that Michael Crabtree comes back from a torn Achilles in November? and somehow is operating at prime Michael Crabtree level by the time the playoffs roll around. In fact, let's get real here. Isn't there a chance that the Niners don't even make the playoffs? How wide was the margin really in that Houston Texan game when the Texans had as many first downs as the San Francisco 49ers? and of course limited Kaepernick to only six completions. From where I sit, the 49ers simply put, look overrated. Let's talk about some other observations. The Philadelphia Eagles were playing the Giants. Michael Vick threw the ball 14 times. He completed six of the 14. In fairness to Vick, he didn't play the whole game like Kaepernick, right? But here's where it gets interesting. You would think that giant D was really suffocating. Vic has a hamstring injury. He leaves the game. In comes Nick Foles. Now understand, in this era of rookie salary caps, where even elite rookies like Russell Wilson, like Colin Kaepernick, are paid really very depressed wages by NFL standards, right? These are guys making around a million dollars a year, right? In a league in which Joe Flacco was making $20 million a year. Just to understand financially, teams have an interest in having younger guys who get paid substantially less and who can't argue about it because that's the collective bargaining agreement. So, if Michael Vick and Nick Foles are equal, teams will go with Nick Foles because Nick Foles comes at a lower price, 
right? Not only that, just think of the future. One guy's in his 30s, one guy's in his 20s. If the team is trying to grow with a quarterback, who has more time left in this league to grow with? Well, in comes Nick Foles after Vic hurts his hamstring. And in addition to having a bigger yards per attempt number, right? Vic's at 7.5. Nick Foles for the game is at 7.9. Nick Foles goes 16 of 25 for 197 yards with two touchdowns. More importantly, perhaps most importantly, against a divisional rival, the Philadelphia Eagles, who had been having a, t a problem with time of possession, actually beat the Giants on time of possession, in, of course, addition to beating them on the scoreboard. Right, Philadelphia, your future might just have arrived. I know they're slow playing it in the press. I know Chip Kelly, the coach, has said Michael Vick is still his quarterback. How much longer is this going to last? I encourage everyone to go back and look at Nick Foles' college stats. I know the guy was a third-round pick. He's accurate. While he doesn't run like Michael Vick, in this Chip Kelly offense, his interpretation's a bit different. He's more vertical than Michael Vick. Right? Deshaun Jackson looks rejuvenated with him. Brent Selleck is back. Touchdown yesterday with Mr. Foles. Right? If I were an Eagle fan and not a Giant fan, I would be hoping that Nick Foles plays a lot more. So the official story, and understand there's the party line, then there's what's really going on. The official story is that Michael Vick, who Chip Kelly said right after the game could have played if necessary that Michael Vick is too banged up to play next week. Next week could be a watershed moment for the Eagles. Nick Foles is going to get the start. If he delivers for the second week in a row, is there anyone who thinks that the week after that, Michael Vick is going to get handed back his job? Right. My point is simply, Nick Foles is a serious contender to the throne. Last year he was a rookie. This year he's a second-year player. All right? Let's just assume that he might be more familiar with what's going on in the NFL. He's someone you need to keep an eye on if you're a fantasy football person. Let's shift gears. Last game I'm going to talk about. Detroit played Green Bay without one of their primary weapons, Calvin Johnson. Calvin Johnson, simply put, is one of the best wide receivers in the National Football League. He set the record last year for the most receiving yards in a season, right? But without Calvin Johnson, Detroit looked awfully limited. Against a defense, quite frankly, the Green Bay defense, that's not an elite defense. Right, understand Detroit had less than 300 yards of total offense. Detroit, the gunslinging offense, the Matthew Stafford offense, without Calvin Johnson, only averaged 4.9 yards per pass. Guys like Ryan Broll still look impacted by the injury he's recovering from. He only caught two balls. A lot of the passes went to tight ends. The team, simply put, is not the same team, right? So Detroit, that offensive juggernaut, the Reggie Bush, Matthew Stafford, Calvin Johnson nexus, just understand they're not that high-powered without Calvin Johnson. In fact, quite frankly, they look a bit limited in a very competitive division, right? I don't know if this game is more a referendum on Green Bay improving its defense 
or whether it's really an indication that the Detroit Lions are not as deep as we thought they were, right? So keep an eye on that situation. As I said, for premium picks, visit us at DwyerSportsBetting.com. Look for some premium pick videos here on YouTube. And um, we'll continue to comment on this NFL season as it goes forward with really an eye on gambling. Making money on the difference between what the public thinks and what's really going on. Keep your eye on KC, Colin Kaepernick, Nick Foles, and the Detroit Lion offense. Thanks for stopping by.